Greetings everyone and welcome back to another cheapo phone review. And in today's one, I'm going to show you all a brand that 99.3% of you have probably never heard of before. But you may have been bamboozled by the thumbnail and you might have went, but s'mores, you are reviewing a Nokia phone. Wrong, I am not reviewing a Nokia phone, I'm reviewing a Conker phone, which means 99.6%. 3% of you now know of the brand Conker? I have known of the brand Conker for quite some time. Conker is a brand that's based in China and they basically make cheap electronics. And they are sold here in Australia as a very, very budget brand. You can buy some Conker stuff from Amazon Australia, Kogan, and you could also pick up a Conker phone at your local post office. But what makes this Conker brand so incredibly fascinating? The font they used is exactly the same as the Nokia font. Don't believe me? I'll show you very soon. Strap yourselves in folks, because we're gonna be going into this review with not a lot of research because I can't find too much about this phone. There's no videos online about this. There's no specification sheets online about this. I even used the Wayback Machine on Conker's website to see if I could find anything about this and nothing exists. So if you'd like to stick around for the whole entire video, get yourselves comfy, maybe a drink or a snack or something. But if you're a little bit antsy and wanna just get straight to it, feel free to use the timestamps in the description as well as the pin comment so you can skip along to wherever you'd like in this very long rambly lengthy video thing of a cheapo phone was that a good intro cool awesome let's start conquer now if you remember i did an android 7 bypass on a conquer oh god how am i going to say this in my australian accent r 8 a Got it. that will be carted up there that was an frp bypass but that phone booted up that went it is Conker. Unfortunately, I didn't capture that in my video, but here's a video from someone on YouTube. I'll link you down in the description below, showing the boot sound of this Conker device. Here it is. You heard that right. It is Conker. This one doesn't do it, which is unfortunate. And I would have loved to have dumped the system files off one of those Conker devices. So you got to hear the wonderful It is Conker boot animation. But unfortunately, I don't have one, but I am looking for one. And if I do find one, I'll let you all know. Because yeah, I've went through the system files on this and that doesn't exist on this. With that lengthy introduction out of the way, this is the Conker SP6. I paid $10 for this from eWaste. Here it is. Conker. It's not Nokia. It's Conker, and if you don't believe me, here's a Nokia N90. As you can see, Nokia, Conker. Let's just put them side by side. It's the same O, it's pretty much the same K, it's the same A, and a number of times when I've seen these devices at cash converters, they're labeled as Nokia devices because you kind of think it says Nokia until you sort of really look at it and go, oh yeah, well, no, it's it's Conker. The build quality of this is on par with the really cheap low-end Nokia smartphones that are made by HMD Global nowadays. And as you can see on the back of this, we've got a blue gradient cover, kind of like a welcome device actually, with the Conker branding as we've already talked about for the last three minutes, a rear five megapixel camera, and an LED flash and a very tiny little camera bump just there. Also present on the back is just a speaker grill. But around the sides of this are actually black, which kind of gives it a bit of a good contrast. We've got a shortcut key on the side, which is assigned to the Google Assistant. All plastic, as I mentioned, because at the bottom we've got a hole for a microphone, micro USB port. No, we don't. There's no micro USB port there. What am I even thinking about? God damn, I'm stupid. At the bottom we have a hole for a microphone and that's it. You're probably thinking, where's the micro USB port at? at the top. At the other side, we've got a power button as well as a volume rocker just there. And at the top, we finally see our micro USB port as well as a headphone jack. Now, I'm not too sure exactly when this was released, but I would say judging from the Conker SP9, which I actually do have in my part suitcase, but it's waterlogged and doesn't work at all. That was released in 2018. So I'd say this phone was released probably in 2018, 2019, somewhere around that. At the top, we have a front five megapixel camera, our earpiece, as well as a front LED flash. And there's also a notification LED just to the side there. As you can see, we do have some thick bezels on this display, but what can you do? It's a budget device that probably retailed for about $99 Australian. As I said earlier in the intro, I've tried to find out stuff about this device before I've went into this review. I know that it's got one gig of RAM. It runs Android 9 Go Edition. It has 16 gigs of storage and a unknown 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor, according to what's in About Phone. I don't know the battery size. I don't know the display resolution, nothing. So I'm gonna be going into this with an open mind. Well, to an extent, because I know some of the specs, but we're gonna just test this out, see how it goes. And if this is a decent budget phone offering made by our friends over at Conker. Does Nokia own the font? What font do they use? Nokia font, what What font is it? No, it's not Nokia Pure. I assume the font's just called Nokia font, but I'm pretty sure Conker didn't have the rights to use the font. I mean, they probably did, I don't know. 
maybe it's three years. Popping the back cover off, it's just a plastic back cover. Here we have the information about the device, which is the Conker, SP6, color blue, black, network. There's your bands list there. It does work on 4G. I've got some branding down there. It's calling an OP30 EGY. Continue touching the screen until you hear a beep to enable accessibility mode. We're not doing an FRP bypass, my friend, shush. We also have dual SIM support, as well as support for a micro SD card. No, it's not. It's not a micro SD card. It's a Merco SD card. So essentially this is like two steps above a welcome device that was actually sold retail here in Australia. That's, that's good. All right, let's get a SIM card and a micro SD card. So we'll try dual SIM support, see if it does work for dual 4G. I don't think it will. I think it'll be 4G and 2G or 3G. But what I want to find out about this device, going in depth with this, is what exactly is this? Is this a rebrand of some other phone? Surely Conker hasn't just made this entirely original device. It has to be borrowed from somewhere. So that is what we're going to find out in today's one. Man, back when the back plastics used to come off just like that. Time to witness the power of Conker and the angry bees inside of there too. There's, there's some angry bees that, that, that don't like me. But yeah, Conker, the font is kind of slightly different there, is it? I'm not too sure, but you've seen it down the bottom, Android Go Edition, and right now is where it should be saying it is Conquer, but it does not say it is Conquer, which is very disappointing. When I seen this at eWaste, I thought, oh, cool, I'll get to hear that brute sound again. No, not the case at all. Before we jump into setup, just get a better look at the display and the bezels as well. The chin's a bit of a thick one, as well as the top there, but the screen is a 5.4 inch display. I'm not too sure what screen resolution is on this though. It looks maybe 540p, but I'm not too sure. That's what I'm going to be finding out in this one. But with the first SIM card slot, I definitely have 4G VLTE. The second slot, not too sure. We may as well connect to Wi-Fi while we're here. And I've got only 2.4 gigahertz. Standard Gboard there as usual. Uh, we're just checking for updates. I don't think we'll get anything, but prove me wrong. By the way, yeah, this Nokia N90 was from eWaste too. It's in immaculate condition. Apart from some scratches on the camera area just there. It is a fantastic phone. I really would like to do a review on this. There's a lot to cover on it though, but it'd be just cool trying to do like a Blair Witch style documentary with one of these things. It'd be awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my Burner Gmail account on this. So we have access to the Play Store. What screen lock options do we have? Patent pin password. Looks like there's no face unlock on this. So we'll just skip that. No thank you to Google Assistant. We can press the button and see what happens and that's about it. We've booted up into a very colorful wallpaper. Taking a better look at the display with the brightness all the way up, which for a cheap budget phone, the brightness is actually decent enough. And color wise, if we have a look, it's not too bad. It's quite reasonable. Doesn't look like it's 720p, I'd say probably 540p, but I could be wrong. Could be a 720p display on this. Also the icons for navigation look slightly different. I don't think I've ever seen them look like this before. Since this is Android Go edition, we should have pretty much all the stock Google apps on here, which we certainly do. I don't have to read the entire list because you've all heard it before. But swapping down, we've got Wi-Fi, mobile data, hotspot, Bluetooth, torch, which I've already tested the camera at nighttime. And the rear LED is acceptable. It's not too bad. The front LED though is pretty bright. I think the front LED is brighter than the rear one. Battery is on smart saver mode, which I don't know the battery capacity of this. As a guess, I'd say between 2,500 milliamp hours and 3,000 milliamp hours. During my testing, I reckon you'd get about a day's usage out of this since it's pretty low specifications. But realistically, I don't think anyone's gonna be purchasing one of these anytime soon. But hey, I'm just letting you all know. Location, auto rotate, which I'll probably just put on. Auto brightness I've switched off because the adaptive brightness is a little bit finicky. Screenshot, do not disturb, and airplane mode is just there in shortcuts. If we touch and hold on the main screen, we get home settings, which nothing really to note there. Shortcuts is just all your widgets and wallpapers. We've got some pretty funky wallpapers on here. I'll try and dump these in the system files and you can tell me where these are from, but they're probably stock Google stuff, most likely. They look like they're stock Google but I could be wrong there. Let's go straight into settings. Nothing much else within network and internet, but we'll jump straight into mobile network. Within Telstra settings, we definitely have VOLTE support. Preferred network type is 4G, of course. And Optus is 4G as well. I was not expecting this to be dual 4G. And what, both have VOLTE as well? That's quite amazing, to be fairly honest. I've already done a core quality test on this, and I'll splice that in for you all. Have a listen, see what you think. And we'll continue talking about this thing. And this is the earpiece quality of the Conquer SP6. It sounds about average, to be fairly honest. This is supposedly with enhanced 4G, which is VOLTE. And yeah, it's, it's okay. It's fine. 
it will do, but it's definitely nothing too spectacular. As for the microphone quality, it sounds a little something like this, which, once again, is acceptable, fairly average, nothing too exciting here, but, you know, for a cheapy phone, it's, uh, it's reasonable. It'll do. All right, that's it with the core quality test. Let's move on. You've just heard the core quality test from the Conker SP6. The fact that I didn't know beforehand that it was actually dual 4G with VRLTE on both SIM cards, that's a winner right there for 10 bucks. Because yeah, I can select the VRLTE video resolution VGA30. Whoa, we can set it to CIF, man. That's some cool stuff. I don't think any other budget phone I've reviewed on the channel has had dual 4G with VRLTE on both SIM cards crazy. Moving on, connected devices. We just have Bluetooth, no NFC or anything like that. Pretty budget here. Apps and notifications, I will just quickly see if there's anything worth opening up later on, but it does give me an idea that we have Spectrum in this, which is also interesting. Another thing that's also interesting is that's Oreo, isn't it? Could they be lying with Android 9 that's on this? I know that it's running Android 8 and above because I couldn't dump the system files if it was on 7 or below, but if we just look in here to see if there's anything that could be Conquer related perhaps, which no, doesn't look like it. OTA or OMA handler, something there. We can open Quick Shortcut Maker, have a check, but it's definitely Spreadtrum. So it's a quad core Spreadtrum processor that's in this. Smil player or Smil player? Hold up, Pi is there. But then again, that's just all an assumption. It could be Oreo on this. It says Pi in settings, but we'll see what happens. Also got a voice over Wi-Fi service there as well. And Ylog. Why log? Once again with the battery. Should last until 5.30 a.m. This probably isn't accurate. As I said, when testing this before the review and stuff, I would give this a generous one day of usage. But then again, that wasn't with two SIM cards in here as well. And there's all of the battery optimization apps just there as well if you want to use them, but I'll just leave them as they are. In display, we have pretty much all of the default stuff there. Navigation bar, can I actually switch it? I can switch it to my regular layout that I'm used to. Audio profiles is looking a little something like this. When I first came into here, I thought, what the hell's going on with this? Well, there's no best loudness. That should have given me an indication that it's not MediaTek then. Storage, we have 16 gigabytes of internal storage with my 64 gig micro SD card. Security and location, screen lock is just Hello, I will update you then. The general performance of this is lacking. With one gig of RAM, and it just keeps yelling at me, it's, yes. Yes, I, I, no, leave me alone. With one gig of RAM in this, and the quad core spread from processor, it's not the fastest thing in the world. Okay, now that I've updated Google Play services, stop yelling at me. Wait, there is face lock. How did I not see this? Okay, let's try this then. Face plus pin. Remember folks, set a very secure pin if it's even gonna come up. Sorry buddy, you can do it. There you go. Oh, wait till we game on this thing. That's gonna be fun. All right, face ID. Do I look away? Stare into my soul. Hello. Maybe. It didn't work. All right, let me try that again. Please turn your head up or down. Please turn down your head. Please turn up your head. No face detected, right? So do this. Oh, it did it. Okay, that's the most confusing face idea I've ever had to do. All right, let's see if it worked. How did I open camera and why did I open camera? See how laggy it is now? Okay. Um, Okay, it did it. It did it. It took a long while to do that. Okay. Wow, that's really slow. But we have face unlock, which just takes a photo with the front camera and says, that's the person unlock the phone. I'm gonna switch that off because that makes the phone a lot laggier. Moving on, accounts have already done. Accessibility, what do we have in here? You do have accessibility menu switch access as well. If you need accessibility, could be good for that. Digital wellbeing, we don't need to go into, same with Google. Gestures is not gonna be gesture navigation. It's just smart wake up and jump to camera. And finally in system, we have about phone languages, advanced system update which is updated to android 9 but we'll just see if we get anything past android 9 no we won't did it break is it all right you okay conquer it, it's all right the little the little hamster that lives inside of this is just running on his wheel right now see security patch level is 5th of august 2019. I don't think this company's known for their system updates. I don't recall ever getting a system update when I was testing that previous Conquer phone that I had. Nope, 
we're definitely up to date on our Conquer SP6. And in about foreign, we have the model being SP6, both IMEIs there. Feel free to look them up if you want to and see what they correspond with, if they do correspond with the Conquer SP6. RAM is one gig, 16 gigs of storage. CPU is just, yeah, quad core 1.4 gigahertz, but we know it's a Spectrum. And Android 9, which if we go to the Easter egg, but we go to the Easter egg. Oh, there, oh, yeah, okay. There's Pi. Whoa, that's smooth. Holy moly, that's really smooth. Anything to go off here? Can we see anything? Sharkle. Okay, Sharkle. And build number, I can switch that on. If I wanna put the window animations down, I can. And that is it within settings. I forgot to push the side button too. I'm pretty sure this is for assistant. It's for the assistant. My little Google button. Calculator, calendar, we don't need to open, but camera, we definitely need to open because this is what it looks like. Start capture. And we actually have some features on here. We do have focus, which is good. We do have HDR, of course, LED flash on the front and back, a beauty mode for the front and back. And if I go along, we have a pro mode. If you wanted to set all that, you can. A burst mode, panorama, filter. You can choose from uh, a bunch of different cool effects there like Nashville and Kelvin. But you also have a QR code scanner, which is definitely helpful nowadays since a lot of things use QR codes now. And the front camera, you can't do too much on the front camera except interval, which is the timer. I've just realized you have HDR on the front camera as well. Once again, beauty mode, but you also have this right here, which is a bokeh effect. And I've tested the camera out already. It's a fake portrait effect but it works. In video mode, you can do time lapse and slow motion. I haven't actually tested slow motion, but I will definitely test slow motion later on. Swapping right also brings up the camera settings, which we've got five megapixels for the rear camera. Picture quality is super fine, which is what all my photos were set to. It has AI detect as well and touching photograph. Oh, that's nice. And then on the front camera, pretty much exactly the same thing. Five megapixels, no touching photograph there as well. Video wise on the front camera, we have 720p and on the rear camera, we have 1080p. EIS is nowhere to be found on here. I've taken some videos as well. I'll splice them all in for you all. Sit back and enjoy the camera test for the Conker SP6 or bootleg Nokia. It's kind of bootleg, isn't it? Alright, testing video on the rear camera of the Conker SP6. This is what it looks like. And we don't have any EIS or anything. It's uh, kind of just fixed. Let's go have a look at the frogos. It's been a while, hasn't it? Look at the frogos. We do have focus. Well, is it focusing? It looked like it did for a second there. I think it is. Also, my gardener moved my frogos around, so um, is, is that better? Do they look like an army now? Cool. And then you got a photo there. What's some purple flowers? Look at these. How nice these look. Holy moly. Looking good. I've got some of the white flowers left, but not a whole lot of them. 
And if I just swing down, the frame up is there, looking uh, reasonable. They are fading because they've been out in the sun for quite a long time. For a budget device, I mean, it's 1080p. Works. Looks okay. I can't be too harsh on it considering I only paid 10 bucks for the thing. But yeah, everything's looking reasonable. There's a lemon. There's a magpie. Ah, there's a cat. Green lemons. Green lemon, yellow lemon, green lemon, yellow lemon. And then Zenny, which he's not looking uh, the correct way. I think he needs to be looking. Attack mode. There we go. This guy looks really cool. And four times digital zoom, I'd say. Or was that two times? Looks like two times. Can you see Breeze there? Maybe? Probably not. It's not bad. I can say it's acceptable for this phone. Why? Why? Chunk been looking at the door all day. Come and Chunk. Been watching birds and flying insects and all that sort of thing. She likes doing that. Plus, it was really, really hot today. So, you would have baked out there, sweetheart. Yes, you would have. Really? Why? Don't look at me like. Don't give me that look. Don't give me that look. I know that look. Oh, that innocent look. I know that look. Testing the Conker SP6 at night time with the LED flash. How does it look? I mean, I've reviewed the photos and videos that I've taken with this already, and I've got to say I'm impressed by the quality. For a $10 phone, well, it's not going to be $10 if you tried to buy it secondhand, but for what I paid for it, it's not bad. It's lacking a little bit here, but during the daytime, it's pretty good. It's a fairly bright LED as well, it's just that night time isn't really this camera's strong suit. It's doing its thing. There's Zenny there, and I just broke a stick. Whoops. Testing the front camera quality of the Conker SP6. This is what it looks like. Jelly movement? Not really. No EIS options or anything like that, just standard. But hey, does it look good? Tab 2 autofocus doesn't work, it's just fixed. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's okay. It's not the best, but it's okay though. It is kind of cloudy out here, so it's, you know, not as bright for my face to illuminate. Wow. Doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, let me see what it looks like um, at nighttime then, because I've got an LED flash. I'm doing this part while I'm editing, and the microphone is terrible on this. I didn't realize that. It's okay during everything else, but during camera, it just doesn't really pick up well. Um, but this is what it looks like. No jelly movement. It's fairly solid. This flash is very bright. <laughs> it's probably brighter than like most of the welcome devices that I've had a look at on the channel. Like, holy moly. Um, yeah, that's... That's quite reasonable. While I don't have any of the photos and videos on this device at the moment, because I've already pulled them off here and put them onto my PC, the rear camera did kind of surprise me with some of the shots, especially this one of the pink flowers. I just can't get over how nice this looks. It's not perfect, but it looks fairly nice. Then the HDR version might be a little bit too much there. As I said, pretty acceptable for a budget phone. The front camera, on the other hand, you know, it, it's fine. If you have just taken random selfies like I was doing, taking some terrible selfies, perfectly fine for it, not a problem. Video-wise, acceptable as I said. Honestly, I really won't pick on the camera quality, except for nighttime with the rear camera, which was running at 10 frames a second, but let's not go too harsh on this. A budget device with budget cameras, they're a lot better than models expecting, so I hope that's a good rundown of the camera on this. Move on to the browser test, which we have Google Chrome on here, and it's gonna to be a, a bit slow but let's go to Conker's website and see what they're doing and their website looks a little something like this if you own a Conker device feel free to let me know how they are for you but they make TVs from HD CRT TV oh 
I think I remember someone owning a Conquer TV, a CRT back in the day. There was a time in Australia where we had a lot of budget CRTs. There was like Tobo, Ultrasonic, I think it was called. All these off-brand CRTs. I'm fairly sure Conquer was one of them. That does make sense. Just browsing through this with all of the images and stuff popping up, it's a bit slow. To be expected with the specifications that we know of so far, it's going to be slow, especially with social media and all that sort of stuff. It's going to start to struggle. Is Conquer a Japanese brand? No, it is not. It's in Shenzhen. Just for browsing normal websites, like, it's, it's not bad. Um, does it say anything on Wikipedia about our name looks like Nokia? 43 years ago, holy moly! They've been going for a while. Well done, Conquer. Oh, they make fridges too. That's interesting. Well, um, maybe their phone divisions... Uh, Another bit of it, perhaps? I'm not too sure about that one, but there's definitely plenty of other Conquer phone models that are out there. But it's just questionable as where they've got that font from. It looks different there to what is on the back. That's looking Nokia. That's not quite Nokia. Maybe it's because of the different colors. I don't know. But look, browsing, I can say, won't be the best on this, of course, with the specs. You can only do so much before it starts to struggle. And speaking of it struggling, um, we just might close the background apps there so I can have my whole close to one gig of RAM allocated for me to use this. Clock, contacts, files, FM radio. Should we test FM radio? Yes. What's on Australian radio on a Wednesday night at 11.09 p.m.? It doesn't sound good. Let me try and find another radio station. Definitely works. Sounded good. And you can also record the radio if you want to. Saves you from downloading all those MP3s, you pirates. Confirm to exit the radio. Okie dokie. There's not a whole lot that we need to test on this, honestly, because it's fairly stock. So we're going through this quite fast. So moving on, gallery, Gmail, Google, as you can see, it's all Go Edition. Maps Go. I haven't tested GPS on this, but I assume that it would work just fine. Messages, phone, photos, play movies, play music. Wow, play music. That's discontinued. Does it actually work, though? Or does it tell me that I have to download YouTube music? Or can we actually... Uh... Okay, we have to download YouTube music then. Wait, no, it's fine. We can just use this. All right, well, let's do a speaker test then. Now, earlier on when this was screaming at me to update Google Play services, the speaker was quite loud. So I'm curious to see how it goes now. Sound meter on, BFG division loaded. It's not bad. It's got a bit of punch to it. Honestly, it's not a terrible speaker. Let's try my terrible song from a terrible EP that I have made. Honestly, not too bad at all. It's like as good as you would expect to find on a $150 budget phone, if that helps. Does that help? No, it doesn't. It's okay. Moving on. We don't have much left because we've got the YouTube test and that's pretty much it. We can start doing gaming and benchmarks and all that sort of good stuff. We've got sound recorder, but you've already heard the microphone test. So YouTube go. Time to see Costa Rica in not 4K. Awesome. Slight problem. We can't actually find any videos. Why does it not work? I'm going to do the sensible thing and reboot this just to see if that helps. I so would have loved to hear it is Conquer right now. Also, when I got this from eWaste, it actually did come with a case. However, I since threw that case out because it was basically the equivalent of looking like a moldy slice of cheese. Um, it was that yellow green sort of looking color and I swiftly just disposed of that and cleaned it all up and made this phone look nice which it does it look nice and it also had a screen protector on it as well which I swiftly took off because it was scratched to absolute hell anyways let's go back to YouTube and see if it's not gonna work because it hasn't connected to Wi-Fi yet it's getting there personalizing my videos I want to see videos of people doing somersaults and, and science uh, it didn't work why doesn't it work? Can I just get normal YouTube from the Play Store? Does the Play Store actually work? Let's see. I'll just put normal YouTube on here. It's probably going to be a lot easier than this broken YouTube Go thing. You can really, really tell the uh, 
the lagginess of this at the moment. If you push your conquer too far, then I guess you're not going to be conquering anything. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, no. No, that's, that's terrible. I mean, that's the first thing I, you think of when you think of conquer. It's like, anyone got an idea for a brand name? I'm going to conquer everything. Did you say conquer? Yeah, I said conquer. Ah, conquer. Command and Conquer. I like that game. We should have played that. Um, I actually haven't played any Command and Conquer games, actually. I'm just rambling. Sorry. Don't, don't mind me. YouTube has finally installed. Let's see if this works. Can we conquer the Costa Rica video? Oh, no. Okay. All right, well, here it is. Let's try 1080p. I'm going to just watch it fail, all right? You never know. It might be, like, perfectly smooth. Ouch. Yeah, okay. But it looks nice, though. Let's go down to 720p, then. See if that makes a difference. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I think it's already kicked in. And it's not too happy. Ouch. Gotta remember the specs of this thing. So let's let's try 480p then. It's gonna be a bit disappointing to see it in 480p, but uh wait for it. Oh no, it's just genuinely laggy on uh, YouTube. I think it's taking up too much uh, system on YouTube, that's why we have to use Go. But Go doesn't work. I'll try Rocket YouTube. Wee! No, it doesn't work. I was going to say, can I just update it? But there's no YouTube Go on Play Store. So I think we're stuck in that regards then. As much as I would have loved to have seen the Costa Rica video at a nice 60 FPS, I don't think that would have happened on this. What I can say from what I did see of it during those brief moments, it looked fairly reasonable on this display. I want to find out the specs of this. I also want to find out benchmark score to see what that gets. Honestly, I want to check the specs first because I want to see what is exactly running inside of this. The Conga SP6 has a 480p display. Wasn't expecting that. I thought it would have been a bit better than 480. One gig of RAM just there as well. The Unisoc SC9832E. Has that been on any other phone that I've reviewed before? I mean, my memory is terrible, but I don't think I've ever seen this processor on any phone that I've reviewed before. But feel free to let me know down in the comments if I'm absolutely incorrect or not. But it is definitely a quad core at 1.4 gigahertz with a Mali T820 GPU. So during gaming, should be pretty good there. System is Conquer. It is Conquer. Android Pi, SP6, nothing else that's screaming out at me there. The baseband, SC9832E. So keen-eyed viewers, back in settings, this is right there, SC9832E. Should have paid closer attention to that, but at least I know what's in here now. The screen is the 960x480 display with a 6x3 aspect ratio. That doesn't make sense. 60 hertz and multi-touch is going to be two-point multi-touch. Memory, one gig, 16 gig. Cameras, five megapixel and five megapixel there. Battery says 2,900 milliamp hours. And I can also say this does not have any fast charging or anything like that. It's just bog standard charging. Sensors says we've got accelerometer, light and proximity, but I'll have to see that once I tear it down. That's given me a good idea of this thing, but I'm gonna just check the other one real quickly, the CPU system info to see if we have anything else, which it's not looking like it. Don't have root access, of course. System on chip. Probably can't recognize it because this is an old application here, but at least we know it's the Spreadtrum or Unisoc. I call it Unisoc. SC9832E, I think it was called. One gig of RAM, 5.2 inches the display. Not quite, but close enough. Battery, does it say the right one? No, it says 3,170,000 milliamp hours. I wish. Thermal is 33 degrees, which so far it hasn't actually got that hot. It's got warm but not hot. Cameras, five megapixel and five megapixel there as well. Well, that gives me a good idea of what is running in this then. So let me go ahead and open up Geekbench. Let's see what numbers we get from this. We've got 102 for the single core score and 187 for the multi-core score. It's on par with a Snapdragon 430 in single, but it's kind of on par with an MT6580 in terms of multi-core. Definitely not a powerhouse that's in this phone, that's for sure. They are just numbers at the end of the day. They don't really tell us everything we need to know about this phone, but it does give me a good idea of what 
what I'm dealing with in terms of performance. All right, let's try San Andreas first, and then I'll try Doom second. Let's put everything to maximum. I'm not expecting too much here, but we'll see how it goes. Cast your votes, folks. Will San Andreas run good or run bad? I would have made another conquer joke, but no. Now's not the time. Now's important time. Ooh, a little bit laggy. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, what? It's fine? Okay, it, it's, a, it's a little choppy. I mean, it's at 480p. And supposedly that's a federal offense. Okay. I mean, it's playable. It looks good. Will I make the jump? Nope. I'll never make it. I'll never make it. All right, let's go super fast then. Uh, it's a bit loud. Looks nice. Haptic works. Landed it. Let me put the settings down ever so slightly. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Still looks good too. So yes, the Conquer SP6 can play games. Granted, this is San Andreas and it ran on a PS2, but it runs here and I want to try and get my car off. Ah, oh, that should be a unique stunt jump or a unique stunt fall. Uh, where am I even? Where did I even fall? Somewhere. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's San Andreas on this. Honestly, I was expecting it to be an absolute lag fest. That was actually quite surprising. And now we try Doom. I found this crazy contraption at eWaste called the Logitech K480. The greatest thing about this though is the fact that it takes up all of my desk, probably number one, but um, number two is that, I don't know where the on switch is, I found it, is that it has a little groove there so I could put you know, a device or something. It's paired, but you can't really see it. It doesn't really work, does it? Fear not. I can just use a microfiber cloth and... Perfect. Of course we know that Doom's gonna run, no problems, but it's just for the sake of it to go, hey, here's another thing that runs Doom. Plus I wanna try my new fancy keyboard. There we go. Uh... All right, cool. Whee! Yep. Perfect. Speed run. Do I get like 12 seconds or something? 13 seconds? 24 seconds. Isn't the speed run world record like seven seconds or something? But look, I think that gives you a good idea. Doom definitely runs on this and it was a good excuse to show this contraption. We've got one last thing to test. One last thing before we tear it down. No pops, are too risky. For all we know, there could be cubes in there the size of gorillas. No one knows our reference. Quick shortcut maker. Let's just see if there's anything worth opening. Like that weird application that I don't remember what it was called. Tertiary tracker. All right. Oh, something. U-P-L-M-N. Uplemon? Uplemon. Ha. Oh, well, Uplemon, no worky. Why log? Why log? Did I break it? Oh, hello. Oh, oh, that looks legit. Actually, that's legit. Um, small player. What is small player? Slideshow. Yes. What is this? Some sort of a remnant from something? Doesn't do anything. Yeah, honestly, I didn't see much in Quick Shortcut Maker that would seem to be dodgy. I think you'd be perfectly fine if you wanted to use this. Number one, if you can find this phone, and number two, if you wanted to use this phone, I think it's perfectly clean. I don't think Conker's put anything dodgy into this. That is everything that I needed to show you on the Conker SP6. And what do I think of this $10 phone? For 10 bucks, the fact that it has dual 4G with VLTE makes it worth it right there, pretty much. Bottom line, that's it, worth it there. Being serious though, I'm not too sure how much the retail price on this would have been, but if it was like 100 bucks or something, you just wanted a cheap phone that had dual 4G, this would be pretty good. 
be all right just for phone calls, quick Google search, maybe a couple of YouTube videos or something like that, but anything past that, that's where you're going to start to struggle and be better just trying to find a phone online from Realme or Oppo or something like that in the budget range that's probably going to be a lot better than this. But with Android Go, the quad-core processor, one gig of RAM, you are pretty limited with what you can do with this. Reasonable screen, reasonable cameras, as I said, the dual 4G, and what is hopefully a 3000 milliamp hour battery in this, or 2900 milliamp hour battery. Yeah, overall for 10 bucks, pretty good find. And it was also worth showing it all to you because of Conker. It's not a Nokia, it's a Conker. Clearly, no inspiration has been taken there whatsoever, none whatsoever. So I think that conclusion while very rushed, it should give you a good idea on what I think of this. I don't think this is total garbage. It's slow, yes. It's not to the point where it's unusable. I found that during my testing and during this review, I found it to be quite reasonable with what I had to do on this. And the fact that San Andreas also ran fairly good too. Hey, it is Conker. Sure you are. Wish it would have said it is Conker. All right, let's take it apart and have a look and see what's inside of this. Apart from a battery, a motherboard, a flex ribbon, and that's about it. All right, we have a bunch of screws to take out, so speedy screw montage. Slow down the speedy screw montage. I got to cut through the warranty sticker. And I also didn't find anything that could indicate that this is a rebrand as well. It seems to be completely original, but there could be something on the motherboard that says otherwise. Got to get into the thing first. Resume the speediness. All right, speedy time done. You know, I could probably take this sticker off and there could be something underneath. I'll just quickly check. No, but I can see our battery though. I'll just put that there and pretend I didn't see anything. Now it's just a whole bunch of clips that hold the plastic frame to the body. So just snappity snap, snap, snap. And we are into the conker. Oh, it's got a genuine weight. It's 3,200 milliamp hours. Well, there you go then. I take that back. It's 3200 milliamp hours. The speaker's on the back there. It's just glued into place. It's not in its own little contraption or anything. I mean, it's kind of in its own little housing on the back panel there, but that's about it. I believe that the SP9 is exactly the same as this. I should grab it out of my suitcase and show you all. Also, it has a pull tab. Pull the dismantle battery. That's nice of them. But you just got a little flex ribbon there for the speaker connection, coin style vibration motor. The board is very basic. All right, and just taking two screws out, that's it. Kind of interesting to see that the micro USB port has this piece of rubber that's just over there with the two contacts protruding out so the earpiece can communicate with it. Does it have any light sensors? It does have light sensors. Front camera just there is just a little guy nothing too exciting and that thing just fell off i'll put that back into place there we go so what's interesting also is this has a thermal pad for cooling right there that's good to see and the rear camera doesn't have any movement to it and it does have some information on the flex cable but i can definitely say that's five megapixels and on the front camera it just says gc5025 which i think that's also um, corresponding to a five megapixel camera, it looks to be exactly the same. Do you want to know the good thing? I can take the shielding off. It's the shielding that has the little poppity uh, bits in it. Yeah? Does that? Yeah? We're on the same page? Cool. Awesome. Totally not violently ripping that off. There we go. We can see our Spreadtrum SC9832. God, it's a bit filthy, but okay. There's a 4C module there. <laughs> I foresee the future. This phone probably won't work when I put it back together. No, it'll work. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a that's the probably 16 gigs of storage, and that's probably the one gig of RAM just there. Not that you can really see that though. Can you kind of see it? Four C module. Couldn't have called your company anything else, could you? Got Conkers and four Cs and spread trims and all sorts of weird things in this one. At least there's thermal pads in there too, keeping it all nice and cool. Look, I can't knock this for a budget phone. If it had two gigs of RAM, more usable. But for what it is and what it offers, and once again, for what I paid for it, not a bad phone if you just want to make a couple of phone calls and check the interwebs and do they still call it interwebs i don't know that's probably 2007 or something man you could definitely do that on this super easy to tear down as well by the way another thing to note as well is that the battery has a lot of space around it so likely this screen could potentially work with that sp9 i have and this area also looks like a fingerprint sensor would go plonk right there too tomorrow i'm gonna go ahead and get the sp9 out and have a look at that i'll show you some more footage it definitely is not compatible 
as you can see I've been in here and tried to scrub it up it and that didn't work. This seems to be a lot cheaper than the SP6. I thought the SP9 was better, but it turns out it's not. But yeah, the battery flex cable is looking a little something like that, which doesn't look too happy there, but the water damage indicator has been set off there. The back looks a little something like this. So I think that's uh, that's definitely gone. I don't think anyone's gonna be saving that. But look, it's got the screen protector on there and the back of it, see, it says Conker, but look, Nokia tested. Told you, people thought it says Nokia, but it's actually Conker. I tried. Slap this bad boy down back in a place like that. I think I connected everything back up again, did I? Do I really need the back cover back on? Yeah, why not? Gives it the old conquer look. Don't mind all the fingerprints, but does it still work? If so, it does. I'll display the list of specifications to the side of this device so you can see what I got for 10 bucks. Yeah, I didn't expect a 3200 milliamp hour battery. It was different to what was described during the spec apps, but yeah, that's that's what's inside of this thing. You folks, let me know. Do you think this is a good little budget device? If you found it fairly cheap for 10 bucks, I mean, I guess you can't say no to it for 10 bucks. Yeah, you'll have to let me know what you thought of this one down below, but I think that's everything that I needed to test on the Conker SP6 that I just want to show you all, all because that there. Hey, if you haven't heard of Conker, you have now. But that means you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching this one. Don't mind my crooked Smalls logo and stuff on my desk. It's completely fine. It's 12:16 uh, a.m. in the morning uh, and I got things to do tomorrow. Uh, but thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you got a kick out of it. I hope you enjoyed me having a slightly unhinged look at another cheapo device. But if you had to use the timestamps to skip past certain segments of the video, that's completely fine. That is why they're there in the description. And I'll put the system files in the description as well for you to take a look at if you wanted to. And if someone has a Conker R8A or something that says it is Conker, let me know because I may be interested in actually showcasing it on the channel or mainly just dump the system files so then everyone can hear the glorious boot sound in all of its glory. I do have plans for a massive phone tour series. It's going to be a lot of time and effort into it, just showcasing all of my phones and stuff. But like, for example, on my desk at the moment, I've got the S7, I've got the S10e, I've got the Note 2, I've got the 5C, I've got the iPod Touch that's a 6th gen inside of a 5th gen, or vice versa. I've got the 6, I've got the 6S, I've got the L, I've got all of them here. I could sit here in front of my camera and just say to you all, this is what I've got in my collection and show you all, you know, different parts of my house where phones are stored and stuff. So if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a little thing in the um, pinned comment as well. So you can all let me know if you'd like to see something like that. I wouldn't be testing them out sort of thing. I just need to do inventory and sort of really go through what I have in my collection. So if that sort of floats your boat, let me know and I'll start doing several parts to it over time and We'll go from there. Before I go, uh, if you were on the stream that I did a couple of days ago, I have bought the stuff off AliExpress. Hopefully that'll be with me in two weeks or so, whenever they ship it. Thanks again, folks. Appreciate you all. And as always, please take care, stay safe, be good people. And I'll see you all very soon because I've got plenty of things I want to work on and I've got lots of stuff laying around. So uh, till the next time I see you all, keep being awesome. I'll see you soon. I won't leave you for another two weeks again. I'll try not to anyways. All right, I need to go to sleep now. Bye. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.